labor costs and hire employees. They, of course, they have an employee number. They fill out weekly working time records. We track on their working hours. Or they may have a contract already set, a yearly salary base, and their expected working hours. So what we need to do here is specifically track how many workers are working for this job and how many hours has been input to this job. That's how we track direct labor cost. Remember, we also have indirect labor cost incurred in the false labor and manufacturing program. And janitors, managers from the entire plant. So if we want to journalize this, let's say we hired three employees, add them together in working hours. In total, we have direct labor cost $169,000. And then we assign manufacturing overhead to people we hire that are harder to trace back to a particular job. These costs incurred all together for an entire year is $28,000. Add these two together, these will incur wages payable in total. The salary we need to pay them is not yet paid. It's called wages payable, $147,000. So this journal entry, of course, is usually not journalized until the year end, usually on a weekly or monthly basis. As the workers help us assemble the products, as they help us generate the products, we need to journalize the labor cost that we owe them, the cost incurred to help us generate the product. Okay, so just like direct materials, we have two categories, direct labor. Just like materials, we have indirect, direct cost. Labor, we also have direct and indirect cost. So the direct cost, again, falls under a working process category. We have over $69,000 here. Now we have $28,000 in contract cost. These two together forms wages payable that we owe them, all together $197,000. What is working process again? Working process inventory considers direct material, direct labor. And later on, when we talk about manufacturing overhead, a portion of this also assigns into working process. So basically, it's the cost of producing a product that is not yet finished. Everything that's starting to be used, starting to be converted to finished goods, the cost incurred for this job falls under this category. Okay, so, so far, we just covered direct materials, direct labor. Later on, a portion of indirect cost also can be assigned to this category. Okay, so this represents the cost incurred that is not yet finished goods in the middle of production. Okay, so this information, how would this affect the T accounts? As I just posted on the whiteboard here, we have wages payable incurred. We separate them into direct labor, goes into WIP, working process. Indirect labor cost goes into the indirect category. And we take care of this after we take care of direct materials, direct labor. Okay, so remember this is the part that's a little bit more complicated because we need to allocate the cost. We don't know what exactly happened for each particular order based on these indirect costs. So we need to allocate a portion to each order. We'll take care of that a little bit later. In terms of representing the information on the job cost record, remember each job order has a specific record that keeps track of each categories of cost. We talked about direct materials earlier. Now we add in direct labor cost. So just assuming that assembling these 10 sets of Excel DVDs costs $200 to hire the employee who's going to work for this job order, add these two together, it is two-thirds of this job order. We have direct materials cost, now we add in direct labor cost. 